Hey guys, welcome back to Fast Money Plane. Today we're going to be talking about dollar cost averaging. So this is basically when, you know, I'll let you talk, Kirby, but I just want to give a quick explanation. Go ahead, bro. Uh, basically, when you are investing in a stock, hopefully that stock is a stock where a company you understand, you believe in, you have a thesis, all of this. And so then that stock at the price point which you purchased at comes below that price. The stock is falling. You feel like you're losing money. If you're going to remain in the stock, the best option you have is to dollar cost average, which is purchase more shares to reduce your cost basis in the stock. So with that being said, though, I'll let you say anything you've got, Kirby. Okay. Uh, while I sit here and try to adjust this screen to make it look like I know what the heck I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm going to share my screen once I take off some of all this uh Google got that I got on here. All right. Let me find you again, which is here. All right. So do I have the ability to share the screen? Let me see. Yep. I got the ability to share the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to transition over to this chart here. All right. Let's see it. All right. And this, can you see it? Yep. All right. So this is the daily chart of the SPY, now that's the five minute chart. Let me go to the daily. All right, so this is the daily chart of the SP 500, and then we'll just take it back. We'll take it back to the beginning. Uh, well, no, we're not going to begin the time. We just go for the last three, <laughs> three years. All right, so, so what dollar, what dollar cost averaging mean is so you can do this in. Let's just say a mutual fund. To me, it's easier to do it in a mutual fund, but you can do it also in an uh, ETF if you can do it in stocks and things like that. But for me, it, I like the dollar cost average more into dividend stocks or uh, s and the QQQ ETF, or a mutual fund that is indexed to one of these different ETFs that's indexed to the SP 500 that's indexed to the NASDAQ or the NASDAQ 100. But how it works is just simply like this. is like if I have $500 to invest every month, I will invest. So we just go back to 2020, February 2020. So what I will do is I will invest $50 here. Even, even if the stock's going down, $50 here, $50 here. Every month, I would just keep doing $50. And then when the stock goes up, I'm still investing $50, $50 every month. Just keep doing $50. I mean, five, $500, sorry. And then I would just keep doing it over time. And then like you see in these arrows, I'm just, I'm just spitting at where a month is at. But just keep doing $50. So all in all, your average, even though you're buying it at this, at these different price points, the average of the amount that you will put in will give you a cost basis somewhere around this three, you know, 384. Even though you bought it in the highs, even though you bought it in the lows, if you just keep doing it over time, your average will be lower than where the stock price is. And then eventually over time, I mean years, when I say over time, and every time we say over time, it means years. It don't mean uh three weeks, three months, you know, six months or something like that. We're talking about over years. Over years, you will be able to accumulate a lot of shares in a stock or ETF or mutual fund that when the stock goes up or parabolic, and then let's just showing you off of this, you know, a longer term time frame, even if you was investing here, 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 and then your average is somewhere down here. And then you're making profit, but you're going to keep investing and then your average will go up, down, whatever, what have you. But as you see in the history of the SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF, the, the stock market goes from the lower left, meaning the lower number, to the upper right, which is a higher number over time. So you will keep making profits over the long term if you keep dollar cost averaging in. So one caveat to this, this is what I, this is what I do. And I'm not recommending everybody else do it, but so I have a set amount and we'll just stick with the $500, the $500 mark. I invest $500 a month, uh, each month, no matter what the stock market is doing, up, down, or indifferent. But when I see 
in situation where the stock market will go down, I will uh, I will double that amount and then go to a thousand dollars a month when the stock market is going down. When it gets back up to the level where I was uh where I was putting a thousand dollars in, I will just let it. I will I will take off the five hundred dollars and go back to uh, five hundred dollars a month while it's going up. And then when I see a down period like here, like uh, 2019, I, then when I see it going down, then I will go to a thousand. And then it go back to 500. And then when you get the COVID, the COVID crash, which you see here, then I will go back to a thousand a month, a thousand a month. And then when it gets back over to the level that I bought it at, which is up here, when I went to a thousand, then I'll go back to 500. And then so we zoom in and then we go to this 2022 when uh, Jerome Powell and that announced in Jackson Hole in October of 2022 that, I mean, 2021, that they will start raising interest rates. I knew the market was going to go down, so I started doubling my allocation back to 1000 back to 1000 back to 1000 And then my number was 4200 on the S&P 500, then I will go back to 500 But I never stopped putting money in to dollar cost average at the 500 I just get more aggressive and put more money in when the stock market go down so I can accumulate more shares at a cheaper price to bring my cost bases lower. So when the stock goes up, I make a lot more money when the stock market goes up. Alex, you got any questions about that? Yeah, um, pull up uh, Facebook uh, meta because I want to yep. talk about this one because this is one that I actually uh, dollar cost averaged, uh, not including, I also did like Amazon, but meta was like the best one I got um, so I started mm -hmm. buying when it dropped at the 200 range. Um, okay, hold on, let me zoom in to there. What's the matter? Was at 200 around yeah. here? So I started buying around there. This 2020, this 2022. So right. around here, right? Okay. Right. So I started buying mm -hmm. around there, and then every so I have it in my um uh, in my Roth. So I was buying it like okay. every, every time we were contributing to the Roth is when I was buying it. But every time uh, that I did purchase shares, it was below 200, but I started at 200. And then eventually I actually got it down to my cost basis at 148. Um, I wish I had gotten more as it was down there at the like 90 range, but uh, 148 is where I, uh, where, where I got left with and I've still got the stock. So it's up roughly about 110% right now from the last time I checked. But yeah, just to show you guys like at 200 and then I was able to drop the, the uh, cost basis another $52. So I'm at 148 on the cost basis. But yeah, and then so- And then now, and then now you're sitting up, you're sitting up here with a yeah. huge profit. Right. And and simply that's how that's how it works. And that's how dollar cost averaging works on anything. Like Alex did it in a retirement account, which is fine in individual stock. But like I said, I usually recommend it on stocks and I mean on dividend stocks and ETFs because again the dividend, you can also reinvest the dividend, the dollar cost averaging in, and then you're putting money in and then letting that roll and then bring your cost base down over time. And then when you bring that cost base down over time. When you get a parabolic move like this, you're making way more money than just buying it one time here and then going through all this headache and then heartache and then confusion. And then and then you bought it at 200, your cost base at 200, then you're at 308. So if you just bought it at 200, you're at 308, you're only up 50%. But if you cost base in, cost base in, and then you get a 148 cost basis and then when it gets back up to 308, now you're at 100% return and stuff instead of a 50 percent return but alex you can close it out there yeah, absolutely with all that being said guys if you like the video hit the like button if you've uh dollar cost average before let us know what stocks you're invested in uh share this video subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one